Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give Jesus a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everybody. Hallelujah. I'm excited to be here. I really am. Um, I know that the Lord will do us good tonight in Jesus' name. The pastor is not here, but his lovely wife is here. Just met her for um, a few moments, but she's a warm and wonderful woman. Bless her. Bless her. Honor her. Thank you so much, woman of God. And all the leaders, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. How many of us are ready for what the Lord will be doing tonight? Let's hold hands together as we pray in the spirit. Let's hold hands together and just pray in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Jibra katus kalabrati katiata boskubria. Limbro kotu sata prata katabarako shabrati keti parata bakuria tapata. Go ahead, make contact with someone. Make sure that you're praying in the spirit. Jante kata pras kata bala koto prati keti parata bala bala bosh. Zebrons kalabaru katu shabrati keti pariata bala bosh. Called wine press. Japa kota shata prakato kete parada bush. Don't be tired. It's part of the meeting. Lente kratos kalabriata katosh. Those outside and in the overflows, make sure you follow praying. Lekata pratos kalabrande kete pratos kete pariada kata pratos shata karaba. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's play one more prayer. Say, Lord, give me an encounter tonight that will change my life forever. Lift your voice and pray. Let's cry to the God of all flesh. Lord, give me an encounter tonight. Give me a visitation. A visitation. A visitation. A visitation. Bible says, for everyone that asketh, receiveth. Everyone that asketh, receiveth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we ask you tonight, you are the wisdom of God. You are the one who can open up scripture to us. And you are the one who initiates encounters. We have not come to waste our time tonight. I pray, oh God, that this will be a new dimension for someone. In the name of Jesus, let every sick person in this place tonight be healed. Let every oppressed be delivered. Lord, stir up a fresh fire of revival. I pray that you grant us access to the spirit of revelation. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please greet one or two people and be seated. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We're going to be very brief tonight. Um, but I kept thinking about what I was going to be sharing tonight and um, honestly I, I had a little discussion with your pastor's wife and I was telling her that when people gather together to receive encounters it's only fair and honest that we communicate something to them that is worthy of their time and their investment and um, the sacrifices when believers come and gather together and we are unable to grant them access to the kind of substance that would be worthy of their time, it is unfair on the part of the man of God. 
That is why I am absolutely excited at this church. Your leaders are sound people who love the Lord and truly, truly make your stay here worth the while. Tonight, I want to teach very briefly but from my heart. And I wish that this message will be for everyone and I pray it will be. But this message particularly is for people who want to walk in a dimension of predictable results. People who want to rise out of the realm of guessing spiritual things into a level where they are circumspect handling the things of the spirit. This is a retreat. It's a conference. It's called a wine press. It's supposed to open us up to dimensions in our lives. Hallelujah. There is a mystery that controls results in this kingdom. Please listen. There is a reason, there is an exact explanation as to why certain people can host superior dimensions of God's presence. Please listen. There is an exact explanation as to why certain individuals can command untold levels of wealth and prosperity. There is an exact explanation as to why an individual can live in a realm of favor that is much more than just a confession. His life begins to explain what favor is. There is a dimension where individuals can rise in the spirit. But you see, everything in the spirit is done on God's terms. You have to understand the character and the structure of the kingdom. When you come into the kingdom, part of the system of the kingdom is your ability to find out God's way of doing things and align. You are not at liberty to suggest your formula for working with God. Are we together? Now, there are many ways you can, many pathways that you can assume in the pursuit and the knowledge of God. But there is a system that God designed to help men follow him accurately. And if we align with that system, then we will find out that our lives become reflections of scripture. The most challenging experience for a believer is when what you read uh, seems like it's far-fetched from the experience of your life. You are, you are too aware that God does not lie, but you also will lack the explanations as to why there are so many gaps in our experiences. And my assignment alongside the many men and women of God that you'll be using in this conference is to bridge that gap, to bring your life to a level of predictability. Are we together now? Where when people tell you how did it happen, you don't just say all oh, glory to God. Yes, all oh, glory to God, but there is a formula. It can be replicated again and again. The Bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. There are principles. Hallelujah. All over the world, we see that it looks like in every territory, God seems to find a few people that he uses as epistles of his possibilities in many dimensions. Whether it is in ministry, in business, in favor, in family, and all of that. And it's not necessarily that these individuals um, were chosen by God's predeterminate counsel. It may not be true for all of them. There were individuals who subscribed to what I'm about to teach you and made themselves not only available but so usable that it looked like God owed them a debt he had to pay. Hallelujah. You don't just walk in power, brothers and sisters. Desire is important but it's not enough to give you the kind of results that we so seek. You don't walk in the anointing just because you feel you should walk in the anointing. You don't walk in favor just because you are tired of suffering. It's more than that. Desire is good to take you to the secret place. Proverbs 18 and verse 1 says, through desire. So that's the starting point. It says, a man having separated himself, he says he seeketh. He doesn't just stop there. He seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. So desire creates the starting point of your experience. 
But it does not stop there. I am concerned about the depth of conviction of believers as to the things they confess and profess. There is a gap between the things we speak and the depth of our conviction. But you see, if you are to do business with God in this kingdom, it's going to come from a standpoint of conviction. Because life will challenge your convictions. Satan came to Jesus and his first question was, if you are the son of God, as if he did not hear God declaring that this is my beloved son. When he came to Eve, he said, did God really say it? So it's up to you to find out whether you heard God well or not. Our dwindling is a sign that there is a dimension of conviction we have not entered. So we believe that God heals today. Then tomorrow we, it's like we're, we're trying to create an explanation. But uh, the apostle in the Bible says, but I know whom I have believed. And I am, help me, persuaded persuaded. I have assumed a depth of conviction beyond deceit that not even my personal experience can deceive me about that truth. That is a depth of conviction. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I want to share very briefly on the law of encounter. The mystery by which men build convictions, certainty about their lives. If you never have an encounter with God, please hear me brothers and sisters. Not only will your Christian life be barren and unfruitful, but you will be frustrated because you will receive the same result with someone who does not know God. Hallelujah. The Bible is full of men and women who did exploits. But before their exploits, every single one of them without reservation had an encounter. They could trace moments in their lives when they had encounters with God. All of the names of God that we teach today were the resultant effect of encounters that people had with him. They never knew him operating in that dimension until a man pressed enough. That encounter revealed that new possibility. And God has not stopped giving us new names. It is because we have stopped pressing for more encounters. All the names of him that we know in the Bible is not all he is. Our experiences should give him new names that other generations should learn. It was someone that introduced him as Rafa. It was someone that introduced him as Jaira. They give clarity to that dimension. You see, God told Moses that he was and is, I am. Is that true? Multifaceted and unlimited in his dimensions. But he reveals himself to man dimensionally. We do not have the capacity to know God in his entirety at once. It's not that we are not the might and the majesty of God versus our degree of comprehension will take eternity to know God. So he helps us by fragmenting himself dimensionally and allows us to assimilate that dimension. And it's like a curriculum of himself. He apportions for a generation. There is a dimension of him he wants every generation to know. You are only successful if you can cover that span of the revelation of him to your generation. Then you hand over and then another generation will build. What name does our generation call God? Not the one you saw from scripture. The name that is a derivative of your secret place. A coded name that you have to explain to your children. That this name was the name I found from my secret place. We call him the God of Abraham. We call him the God of Isaac. We call him the God of Jacob. We call him Rapha. We call him all kinds of things. What is his name to you? For when you stand before Pharaoh, you will not tell Pharaoh the name of another God. You will tell him the name of your God, not our God. They 
that know their God, not their neighbor's God. Daniel 11 and verse 32, the B part. Those who will do exploits are they that know their God. It says two rewards will happen to them. Number one, capacity. They shall be strong. They shall be strong. So I look at your weakness in front in, in the presence of challenges, and there is a diagnosis for that condition. There is a dimension of God you have not encountered. That's why you're not marrying after five years is almost making you leave God. There is a depth of conviction that has not entered you. So that th your reaction is showing like you see someone with headache, and you know the issue is not headache. That headache is revealing that he has typhoid. When believers dwindle in the face of challenges, it's a sign that they are not strong. And the Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, what was the problem? Your strength is small. Are we together? So the Bible says, listen carefully. Paul prayed a prayer that will be strengthened in our inner man. It takes capacity to survive the vicissitudes of life. It takes spiritual strength to wait while the word of God perfects itself in your life. It takes strength to not fabricate experiences out of your impatience and coin a theology about God on the strength of our impatience. Job said, though he slay me, I trust him. Can I deny who he is? I've had an encounter with him. I'll be lying to claim he is not faithful, though he slay me. Are we together? And then number two, he says, they shall do exploits. They that know their God. You call this wine press. Can I continue? You see, let me tell you this. Truly speaking, brothers and sisters, the cure for many of the sicknesses the worries that befall men, including believers, the cure is a genuine encounter with God. I'm not talking of born again. No, no, not at all. In Revelations, he was knocking the heart of the church, not unbelievers, crying for a deeper intimacy. Here's what the Bible says. Give us Psalm 63, please. Psalm 63. It says, Oh God, very important scripture. Oh God, Thou art my God. Listen. It says, early will I seek you. Timing matters in seeking God. Don't say any time is convenient. No, sir. Timing matters. It says, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Why am I seeking that? Verse 2. It says, to see your power and your glory in my life. The same way I saw it in church. Lord, why do I see certain dimensions in church? I celebrate you corporately. But I go back to the secret place and I cannot reproduce that result. So I start seeking you for myself. Ah, so it was my pastor's prophecy that has been pushing me. Wonderful. But what if the pastor is not there? Lord, I seek you to see the experience I see on Sunday. That pastor prayed for me to get a job. Now they want to throw me and pastor or traveled abroad must i wait till he comes back let me seek you so that i can reproduce that experience what did he know about god that made his word work oh god you are my god he says early will i seek you hmm. are you still here to see your power and your glory to see it in my life because then, like the madman at Gadara, my, my proposition to draw people to the kingdom will be automatic. That man was not advised to bring ten cities. He was too impacted to be quiet. A legion comes out of a man who had been cutting himself. The Bible says he went. Notice that everyone who had an encounter did the work of an evangelist. It's not by advice. It's a product of encounter. Anyone who gets something real becomes too grateful to keep quiet. Jesus begged them and said, keep quiet. And they went and said, no way, we are not keeping quiet. The woman at the well, come, see a man. 
She left what she was doing. Her priorities were altered in a moment. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. Early will I seek you. You see, believers, let me tell you something. The days that fall before us are days that will require our personal revelation of who God is to us. There are certain parts in the spirit that people don't go in group. Not even husband and a wife. You must know God for yourself. Are we together? So that we do not become victims of all the vicissitudes of life. The system of God is such that God shows you the potentials in his kingdom. But you don't just celebrate potentials. You must press for grace to make it your experience. Let me tell you something. There are two dimensions of, of operating in, in the word of God. Number one, there is the prophetic dimension. Realities from God's standpoint. So when God speaks from his standpoint... He does not speak as though there are any limitations. He's showing you the full potentials that are resident within his systems when activated correctly. But there is the experience of the world where you would have engaged with those mysteries to make it yours. Boasting around the prophecy of the world is not enough to convince you until it becomes your experience, that which we have seen. That which we have heard. That which our hands have handled of the word of life. This is what we are teaching you. So we, we are not waiting for your response to convince us that we are right. The encounter is too deep for argument. Are we together? If this is why I stopped tonight, that's, that's already a revelation for someone. The Bible says two men built. The issue is not the building, but what it was built on. I wish I had time, would have walked a few scriptures. Frankly speaking, I've not even started what I want to discuss. This is just to prepare our hearts. But if, if the time is over, then, then that's it. This is a conference. Wherever we stop, we'll continue tomorrow. Listen, Jesus is introducing the word ecclesia, the church. And this is what he says. He says, who do men say that I am? Listen to Jesus. Very, very, absolutely intelligent personality. Who do men say that I am? So it was an issue of identity. Notice how the church was framed. Identity. Who do men say that I am? And they said, thank you, Jesus, for answering this question. We've been asking it too. This wonders we see you do. Sometimes we eat together. The next time you are walking on the sea, like, we have been confused. It's just that we've been discussing it quietly. And Jesus said, who do men say that I am? And they said, some said you are Isaiah. Some say you are this and that and that. Maybe tomorrow I will tell you why they could believe that he was Isaiah and not doubt. This is what some of our cultures teach as re reincarnation. Hmm. No, 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 no. I'm not saying people reincarnate. Listen, that Isaiah and Jeremiah, every one of those prophets were not pure human beings. They were bodies who represented systems. The body may die, but the system continues. So they can say a man has come in the spirit of Elijah. Because Elijah is not a person. He's a system. The same way Jezebel is not a person. It's a system. So Elijah dies and comes again in John the Baptist. Jezebel dies and comes again in Herodias. Herodias, you know, the wife of Herod. And then the whole thing continues. Are you getting that now? So, where was I? Who do men say? Listen. Who do men? Don't just get excited. Listen, listen. Who do men say that I am? So the problem is with men, not angels. And all of that. Who do men in this realm? Who do men say that I am? And they say, some say you are Isaiah and this. And then Jesus said, you've walked with me. Leave all the onlookers. What is your conclusion you, you were the ones who packed the remaining bread. You were the ones who sub we ate together. What name do you have for me? And not one of them. Proximity is not equal to encounter. 
that you are around the things of God. Hmm. Are we together? Hmm. He said, what do you say that I am? And Paul speaking, this is what he said. He said, I know who thou art. The word know there is the same word that is used a man knowing his wife. He's not saying I'm aware. It's an experience. I know who thou art. He says thou art Christ, not Jesus. Jesus was not his name. It was the name they gave his body. In the beginning was you see that? He says, I know who thou art. Thou art Christ, the son of the living God. Here's what Jesus says. Flesh and blood. That means this dimension is not flesh and blood. You have to rise above flesh and blood to understand this. He says, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but the spirit of my father. Now listen, Jesus is establishing the church now. He's saying, and I say unto you, thou art Peter. And upon this rock, for years there has been, I think till now, a theological debate of what the rock is. Let me tell you, the rock is the mystery he just explained. He says, and upon this mystery, I will build my church. And I will build it in such a way that if well complied with the gate of hell, cannot. Are we together now? And what is the mystery? That before you speak, you must have a revelation of what you are saying. Otherwise, it's the same thing as not saying anything. This is how I will build my church. That is not just talking anyhow, but talking on the strength of understanding. This is how my church will function. So the sons of Sceva were about to try it. And they could talk, but they did not have the revelation. The house that was built on sand. And they say, we adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. That's the real Jesus. But here's the, the, the response of the demons. Jesus we know. We see the understanding that supports their confession. Paul we know. But we see you speaking not from a depth of conviction. And they beat him. So the issue was not just his speaking. But the depth. And the Bible says, this is how I build the church. Two men built, one upon a rock, one upon sand. The winds came on both of them, but the one upon the rock stood still. That rock, you see, is yes, is Jesus, but much more than that. That rock is a mystery, it's an understanding. When you read all through scripture, remember there was a time when prophet Balaam was asked to curse Israel. Are we Bible students? And the Bible says he invoked by divination. He stood to curse Israel. They were not praying but the curse could not work. Why? There was a formation. The Bible says they, they designed themselves in such a way that the ark was at the center and they went to bed. A man was wasting his time. A true prophet wasting his time on the mountain but the pattern fought back. Not, not, just, not just the prayer. There was a formation that made it impossible. So he said, I will build my church. There is a formation that if that church subscribes to, you see that? No matter what the devil does, you will live as if it does not exist. It is true. It is true. But you see, you never stand before Pharaoh until you have seen the burning bush. Because Pharaoh is not an ignorant person. You stand before him, you say, I'm used to this. I'm used to this. You must introduce a plague he has never seen. Then he will let you go. Can I just give one of the keys and then it's already, um, we don't have all the time, pardon me. First John chapter 2 and verse 14. Thank you, Jesus. Can you pray in the spirit just for one minute? Thank you, Jesus. We cry for the spirit of revelation. Believe me, something is changing in your life.
Alleluia. There are requirements to sustaining an encounter with God. Please listen. You want a genuine encounter with God. It is free, but it is not cheap. There is an encounter. There is a condition. This condition is necessary because of something God said about man. This is what God said about man. He says the heart of man is desperately wicked. Now, that's not an insult. It's the truth because it's God speaking. He's not condemning you. He's identifying something that needs to be solved. Are we together? So that man by default, he says the heart of man is desperately wicked. What that means is that there is a conditioning in man by default that unless a spiritual circumcision happens, that man cannot be predictable. Are we together? Let me give you an instance. David was a man, brothers and sisters, if you saw David, you would think that David was a handsome, young, obedient gentleman. But ladies and gentlemen, that was a murderer. He didn't just kill when Uriah came. That was the day that opportunity came about. Now, the fact that you've not had an opportunity to execute what is resident in the flesh does not mean it's not there. I may have never had the opportunity to, you know, be immoral and sleep around. It doesn't mean I have conquered it. It's just that the scenario for that loss to be executed has not happened yet. So when you come to God and you want to host certain dimensions of him, the first assignment is he will beckon on you. It's like a threshing floor. Are we together? And then, under his supervision alone, would he accredit you to host certain dimensions of his glory? God loves everybody, but he does not trust everybody. Never be confused about it. He gave unto one, five, two, and one, according to their abilities, not his love for them. Meaning he had been watching them. And you see at the end of it, he was right. Because all of them produced at that level. Is that true? Are we together? So, when you come to God, oh Lord, grant me grace. Lord, look at the woman of God. Look at the man of God. And then God says, everything is for free. But there is a system you must subscribe to. Is that true? The hardest journey, listen to me, of believers is their willingness to walk with God until that circumcision is complete. It is the greatest price for encounters and spiritual power. This Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Let's appreciate the sound people. Thank you. Hallelujah. Are we together? People don't just become anointed. You see, let me tell you something. I know many of us just believe, look, anointing is anointing. Everybody is anointed. It's not true. Oh. It's not true. I know you know this. This is a church with great spiritual understanding. The Bible says, even among the stars, one differed from another in glory. You see that? So don't, God had given up Saul. But he could not anoint David because a man still refused. Are we together? God kept begging Samuel. Samuel, I want to move on. You are stopping me. And Samuel was still interceding for Saul. Samuel refused to obey the voice of God to go to the house of Jesse. And God remained helpless until he was willing to cooperate. It's not all about men, but it is about men. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When you honor a man, you see, you don't just honor a personality. You honor the price of submission to this thing I'm teaching you. To be able to host certain dimensions of God. If Benihin walks in here, even if he's teaching on relationship, people will rise from the wheelchair. Hold on. Do you know why? Why did it not happen when you were there? It's, it's the same God. But your alignment 
may not have given him room to move to that degree. Let me tell you why it is important for this circumcision to happen. Otherwise, our disalignment will keep making God look small. And people will interpret God based on the template we create in our lives. So if I remain poor and broke because I do not understand God's system in prospering me, my life will keep giving a wrong message. Are we together now? If I remain sick and after all kinds of prayer, I don't get healed, chances are that an onlooker will conclude in his heart that God is powerful, but this dimension, it looks like he's weak. So our alignment gives us greater space. Remember, the problem was not the oil. It was the vessel. As the vessel kept expanding, the oil also followed. And when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped. Is God speaking to us? I want us to so expand this year that by March, you would have gotten everything you thought would come 2015. Listen, listen. That you will unconsciously enter certain dimensions of realities. You will program life like a chess and watch it happen. On the strength of knowledge. It says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability. You are only grateful, not surprised predictable results predictable results light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light my life light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord it's a very simple prayer it says light me lord Light me, Lord. Listen, the Bible says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. But until there is illumination, this is how Jesus defines the kingdom. He says the kingdom is like a treasure that has been missing. How do you find it? You light the candle and then you use it to sweep the house. And when you find that treasure, he says they are life, not to believers, to those who find them and health. Brothers and sisters, it is God's desire that you find something tonight. Sickness is real. Oppressions are real. All kinds of demonic things are real. But there is a realm where your immunity becomes an experience. Otherwise, it will remain prophecy. And you will keep getting frustrated. I foresee that if we do not push in revelation to bring believers to dimensions of experiences, they will start verbalizing their frustrations very soon. We must bring people... While we don't serve God just because of the things he will give us, it is a consolation to your Christian experience that your life bear fruit. Please sit down. Give me a few minutes. First John. Mm. Blessed be the name of the Lord. First John chapter 2. John. Is it first John? What did I say? The epistle of John. Let me turn there. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When you get what I'm teaching you, the Lord himself will cause you to walk in dimensions that you will be afraid of. You will watch more people get blessed. You see, if you are not anointed, you are not a blessing. It's, it's not an insult. The only way to do good is when you are anointed. Acts 10, 38. Look at the extent to which God was anointed. That was the basis of his doing good. Otherwise, we'll keep counseling people and telling them it's all right. No. We must sustain grace that when you appear, people start rejoicing because you are a portrait of a possibility in Christ. Let's, let's read on. Please give me that scripture again. We're reading to verse, um, let's see. No, no, no. Not, not, not this first, first John. If you are blessed, say amen. amen. First John chapter 2 and verse 14. Let's, for time's sake, let's go to verse 15. That's what I'm really looking for. First John chapter 2 verse 15. It says, love not the world. Now listen. Don't close your mind yet. This is a big secret. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. 
It says, for if any man love the, lo the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Let's look at this scripture carefully. The Bible never said, don't have money. It never said, don't aspire for great things. I want to show you why many believers do not encounter God. It says, love not the world. The word love, there for time's sake, as you know, is the word eros. Is the word lost. An affinity that makes it a do or die affair. An affinity. Are we together? That, that John, John the Revelator is giving us an understanding. He's saying as we interact with this system, chances are that the, our need for what to eat and what to drink can slip its way into our minds and finally get into our heart. And he's giving us a word of caution. Are we together? He's teaching us how to maintain a portrait that can sponsor encounters. This is what he says. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. He said if at any point in your Christian experience you find out that there is an ungodly affinity to these things, something is wrong. He says, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Please give us 16. Then he categorizes everything into three. For all that is in the world. Number one, the lust of the flesh. That there is an attachment you can have by reason of having a body. Listen, listen. What I'm teaching you will make you prosperous beyond your wildest imagination. Trust me. You will, you will walk in dimensions of favor and God's grace. It says, the lust of the flesh. That means because I possess a body, there are certain weaknesses that can attempt to steal into my life. Are we together now? Yes. Things like gluttony, for instance. Things like slumber. I can... Be a victim of sleeping so much so that it can affect my prayer life and my word life. It's not that I'm bad. It's the side effect of having a body. He's first telling you where the temptations can come from. Then creating a system of immunity. Are we together? That it is, it is the keeper of Israel that does not sleep and doesn't slumber. But because I have a body, that chances are I can be tired. And that tiredness can affect my prayer life, can affect my word life. It has nothing to do with being bad. It is a limitation that comes with this body. Are we together? Are we blessed now? The lust of the flesh. Number two is the lust of the eyes. That because you own a pair of eyes, there are certain temptations that can come as a side effect. Are we together? For instance, covetousness. If you were blind, you would just walk with your imagination. But now that you have eyes, you can be on your way trekking home and see someone just passing, playing a worship song in his jeep. And that covetousness can graduate to anger. And you just insult him and say, these thieves. That would not have been a possibility if you didn't have eyes. And so, the, the apostle is teaching that because you have eyes on their own, they can veer off and get you into trouble until there is a system that regulates their operation. Is it not David that was standing at the time when kings go for war and he saw someone's wife baffing? A blind David would be so faithful. But a David with a pair of eyes, his eyes meandered around a bathroom and he saw a lady. And knowing that he had authority as a king, those days they didn't ask a lady out and give her time to think about it. There and then, you know, as you ask her, she goes to the palace and that's the end of it. And then he called, and from there became a murderer. From there, many other things happened. And so, John is giving us a caution that on your pathway to walking with God, you will find out that on the strength of the things your eyes see, they can plant a seed in your heart that is capable of derailing you from encounters. It is also not because you are bad. It is the side effect of owning this pair of eyes. So, he's teaching you how to coordinate it that if your eye be single, then it is possible now for your body to be full of light. And then finally, 
He says the pride of life. Look at me. The pride of life is not the same as pride. The pride of life is vain glory on the strength of obvious achievements. If you are not, if you've not done anything, you can't have the pride of life. You can have pride, but not the pride of life. Are we together? The pride of life is a limitation that affects great people. On the strength of something obvious, like Nebuchadnezzar, build me 90 feet gold of my stature. He was a man who had obvious achievements until he was reduced as a beast for seven years. Listen carefully. The pride of life, this was the undoing of Lucifer, the son of the morning, exalted above the stars of God, his manifesto. When you read all of that, I will exalt myself above the stars of God. And he was reduced down. The pride of life. That as you begin to achieve certain things, you can get to a point in your life. It's not being bad. But the pride of life can catch up with you. You will gradually erode God out of the equation of your achievements. You won't do it directly. You will still say, God, you are faithful. But the truth is that he's, he's, you know that you are the one. You have glorified yourself and you've sat on the throne. And so John says these three things. Whoever can overcome them has created a conducive environment to host any dimension of God. Are we together? The disciples had been walking with Jesus and then they started negotiating sitting at his left and right. Remember? And then James and John went to meet their mother to come and last for them. And then while she was lasting for them to sit at the left and right, they were caught in the act. And the disciples got angry. They said, so we are here suffering together. And this is the hidden political agenda that you people have. They didn't love him. They believed he would dethrone Herod. So they were already arranging political positions for themselves. And the mother came as a woman and said, Sir, the way you are performing these miracles, not even Herod will stop you. So before you get there, let me last for my children. And the disciples said, No. That's why when they caught Jesus, they ran away. They were disappointed. Their whole goal and ambition, everything had been shattered. So when Jesus met Peter in chapter 21 of John, he asked him a question. He said, lovest thou me more than this? You claim to seek me for three years. And only because I disappeared for 22 uh, or 72 hours, you ran away too. Lovest thou me more than this? Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. If you pass this test... There is no limit to the dimension of the power and the glory of God that will come upon your life. This is the realm where he suffered no man to do them wrong. This is the realm where someone is talking about you in the secret and like Abimelech, he has a dream in the night. Be careful. The jealousy of God has been so committed on the strength of your sacrifice. He will prefer a nation to perish than anything happen to you. You have become an endangered species. There are such men on earth. Where God will watch others praying and carry their prayer requests and ask someone, do you want it? Not that he's asking. Is that not what happened to Abraham? Abraham, I usually don't reveal these things to people, but come, I want to discuss something. I'm about to destroy something. Abraham said, wait, wait, wait. I have an interest in that place. And I will not allow you to destroy that place until Lot is out. And God said, done. What dimension is that? He's calling you deeper. 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 He's calling you deeper, deeper, deeper. Listen, hear me. Every time you rise in the spirit, it's like a notification on you, a badge, a, an authorization. Demons see it, angels see it. You can only fake things in the physical realm. But you can arise in the spirit. This is what can make a man enter a region and change the climate. Change the climate. 
God is wanting harvesters in this season to be men and women who will replicate dimensions that they will look at the pastors and see dimensions. What manner of favor? Say, is it that it happens once in a while? You say, it used to happen once in a while until I got a key that he can daily load me, not monthly, not weekly. He can daily recycles every 24 hours, not just by jumping around understanding stability that you can look at the spirit of death like this and pass it it passes you you have no be what fellowship there is such a realm please i'm not hyping you it's the truth there is such a possibility <laughs> the prophet looked at the woman he was not asking god to do it he said, Madam, what should I do for you? Should I talk to the governor for you? He said, No, I live among my own people. And the servant said, I think she's barren. And that man said, According to the, it was not a suggestion. I program a reality and make it happen in nine months. He gave it a time. This is not just prophesying, he was manifesting the attributes of a dimension of intimacy. There is such a realm. I have spent my life searching the keys to these dimensions. Because I do not want to live my life wasting my own time and wasting the time of God people, God's people. I don't want to ever tell you be healed and then you walk out not healed. Then I create a theology that your faith is not enough. But when you go to the hospital, there is even a center called ICU where people can't talk. They don't even know they are there. And the doctor still treats them. Why shouldn't we have that possibility in the spirit? That if you are so weak and cannot help yourself, there should be a, a provision to still help you. Most of those talk are reflections of limitations. It's an uncomfortable truth, but this is called wine press. If, except you didn't come here for an encounter. If you really came for an encounter, pastors, listen, there are dimensions we can enter. There are realms. There's too much talk. There's too much explanation. We can't keep explaining this thing forever. Members will start asking questions. We must communicate substance. Oh Lord, you are my God. Eli, will I seek you? Not seek what you have. You have many things. But early will I seek you as a proof that the loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, the pride of life does not have any time in the kingdom you seek any other thing outside the Christ. Notice, I didn't say get, seek. Let me tell you what Satan does. He can give you anything, but the condition is that your eyes must leave Jesus. Are we together? Yes. I wish I had time. I would have shown you where Satan can give things to people. It's a manipulation of the realm of the spirit. The realm of the spirit is not heaven. It's a spiritual atmosphere with advantages by default over the physical realm. Anyone who accesses there can provide some kind of advantage. You don't have to be a believer. That's why it must be of God to have his accreditation. This can't be it. My God is so much bigger than this. I know I've seen little healings here, but this can't be it. You are so much bigger than this. Brothers and sisters, listen. Imagine all these people in our homes that refuse to come to church. You invite them for her best. They say, go, Sister Mary, pray for us. There is a dimension that you must introduce about God. You will line them up to church. There will be no seats enough for them. Not just to honor a man of God alone, but to advance the kingdom. It was not supposed to be this hard. Our lack of encounters is what has created so much difficulty. He said, Gentiles shall come. Have they started coming? We are the ones going. What is, they will not come to us, to your light, your light, your light. 
And then there are arrogant kings like Sheba to the brightness of your rising. Was it not prophesied that in the latter days the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted? Right? And that all nations, how many? When they met Jesus, they said all men seek for you regardless of tribe, regardless of region. Nobody brings any tribalistic thing because all men are seeking for the same thing. They are seeking for the way. They are seeking for the truth. They are seeking for life. And in this season, brothers and sisters, God is finding men. The condition, his arms are not too wide. That breakthrough, you please help those under the anointing there. It, it, is, it, is, not, it is not just about talking, but a track record in the spirit. You can fake power, not his presence. You can fake experience. No matter how I am nice to pastor's wife, she's not my wife. There is a coded language that only her husband can call. Please play streams. Increase the volume, Mike. I sense the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. So he's drawing you. He's showing you that there is a dimension. Man of God, have you seen in your life what you saw in the dream? Have you seen it where you were walking and your shadow was healing the sick? You've seen it 10 years ago in the dream. When will it become your experience? Oh Lord, you are my God. Early will I seek you to see your power and your glory today in my life as I have seen in the sanctuary. Listen. The centurion came to Jesus and he said, Please come to my house, or, you know, and all of that. My daughter and Jesus said, no, no, no. I will come to your house. Let me honor you. And the centurion said, no, you don't have to come. For I am a man under authority. I did not become a captain by dash. I know the alignment I went through. And on the strength of that alignment to the Roman government, I can tell one, go, and he will go. If he does not, the force that have so greatly aligned under will fight him. He says, so I know you are not on your own. You, you, you spent 30 years aligning to a system. 30 years learning and building. Hear me. The Lord is calling on men and women who know him. Not men in ministry. Men who know him. Encounter. Fire devouring before you. That you stand and dislodge the gates of darkness. Harvesters, hear me. I believe that there is a shift. There is something. There is a dimension. That as a corporate body, the Lord wants to bring you. A strange level of results, miracles, signs and wonders. A demonstration of the life and the power and the glory of God. In a way and manner that the least among you will be like David. I will multiply them, he says, they shall not be few. He says, I will glorify them and they shall not be small. It's time to turn prophecy into experience. Listen, in John chapter 3, Nicodemus came to him and he said, Rabbi, I know that thou art a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. When God is with a man, there are results that show. No man can do these things except God be with him. And Jesus said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye be born again, you shall not see the kingdom. Prophecy, potentials. And then he said, will I now be born into my mother's womb? And then he says, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter. You have seen the kingdom, but have you entered? The prophetic dimension of the kingdom. God can heal. God can bless. It is my heritage to rise, but has it become your life? The purpose of studying the Bible is not just that you cram scripture, that one day you become it. So that if someone left his Bible at home, he can look at you and see it's an epistle, a living epistle, a charagma. There is power in the name of Jesus. 
There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. To break every chain. 